In a city that never sleeps, New York sure has inhabitants that might keep you up all night long. From historic haunted houses to spooky taverns, today I'm going to be sharing with you seven haunted places in New York City. The thing is, there's just been so much murder, mayhem, and tragedy in the many year history of New York City that there's just so many spots here that have paranormal activity. And I'm going to be getting into many of them today, but I'm excited to announce that I will be launching a special ghost tour this Halloween season. The link will be below to book your tickets to this, but join me as I show you places that I won't be showing in this video today, of course, as we walk through New York's dark history with a candlelit lantern. It's gonna be awesome. So I hope to see you there. I'll see you at the first haunted location. <laughs> I'm here at the site of one of the most infamous unsolved murder cases from 1799. In that time period, a body was found in a well, and that well is still right here. It's now inside of this store called Koss on Spring Street. The well-documented story has it that a young woman named Guillelma Elmore Sands left her Greenwich Street boarding home on the evening of December 22nd 1799 to meet Levi Weeks, a fellow boarder. The two had a secret romance and were planning to elope that night. However, 11 days later, her body was found in Les Bernard's Meadow, today's Spring Street, and marks on her neck suggested death by strangulation. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. That well is still in the store today. It was actually uncovered in 1980 when uh, the owner of the building was going through the basement and taking the dirt out of it. And it seems to be buried here untouched since 1799. Now they have had some haunted occurrences in here, so shop at your own risk. The murderer was never found to this day. I'm here at the McCarran Park Pool, and this spot is located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and is known to have a young girl that haunts the grounds at night. It's said that she may have drowned on the site, and at night you can hear her screams. Yeah, really freaky. I'm actually like really freaked out being here. They have had paranormal investigation groups come in here and find some sort of activity in the water, like a drop in temperature. And there's also been photographs pointing out orbs being present. Whether or not it's safe swimming in this pool is really up to you, but I wouldn't because who wants to mess around with a, a ghost child that drowned in it? Located on one of New York's most picturesque blocks is a building with a notoriously dark history. It's right behind me. It's this building. And this building's called the House of Death. It's known to be haunted by over 22 spirits, the most famous of which is Mark Twain. In the 1930s, a mother and daughter that were living here actually said they saw Mark Twain's ghost appear and he said to them, I has a problem, I gotta settle here. Yeah, spooky, wonder what that problem is. In the 1970s, actress Jan Bartel actually moved to the top floor of this building and she had so many paranormal uh, experiences that she actually wrote an entire book about her life living in this spooky spooky building. It's called Spindrift Spray from a Psychic Sea and she completed it in 1974. Then in the 1980s something terrible happened. This house was actually inhabited by what many consider a real-life demon. His name is Joel Steinberg and in this house he beat and killed his illegally adopted seven-year-old daughter and when they came into the house, they found an infant that was tied to a playpen. He went to prison for this crime and today is out of prison. So it's kind of freaky. Um, a lot of freaky stuff going on in this house. Looks like regular house to the untrained eye, but there's so much more here 
than uh, the facade shows. All right, this next haunted location I have a personal experience with, which is pretty freaky. This is the new Amsterdam Theater. This is where I worked for four years for Disney Theatrical, and this building is haunted by a ghost called Olive Thomas. She was a showgirl here in the 1910s, and she haunts this place. She only shows herself to men, though, and I know a few people that have seen her, but the story goes that Olive Thomas um, had a bad marriage, and one night she died mysteriously from poison. Now, the thing is, we don't know if she killed herself because she learned that her husband uh, had syphilis and uh, she, he gave it to her, or he killed her because he, he was tired of her, or she accidentally drank his medicine um, that was topical instead of applying it. The thing is, the bottle was in French, so it's definitely possible that it could have been an accident, but uh, either way, if it was a suicide, a murder, or an accident, she definitely haunts this theater. Her portrait is in various places throughout the theater, and every night when the cast leaves after performing Aladdin, they have to say goodbye to Olive. It's just part of the protocol. There's also a ghost light in the center of the stage when no one's in the theater, just to make sure that she uh, has light. Pretty freaky, um, really true, and um, definitely I'm glad not to be working in a haunted building anymore. <laughs> Yay for me. <laughs> I'm here at St. Mark's Church in the Bowery, and as you can tell, the bells are ringing, and I'm wondering if it might be Peter Stuyvesant who's said to be haunting this exact location. Peter Stuyvesant was the last Dutch governor of New Amsterdam. And if you're not familiar with New Amsterdam, well, you should be because that's what New York was called before it was called New York. He built this church in the 1600s, and actually it was torn down, the one he built, and replaced with this one uh, later on. But he wasn't very happy about that, and it said that he appears here frequently, making sure that his grounds are taken care of. He's a well-known ghost. He just wants the best for his land. Peter Stuyvesant is actually buried here, which explains why his ghost has stayed for so long. But there's been other sightings of spirits appearing and then disappearing. But I'm telling you right now, this is like just really creepy feelings being here. So I'm gonna go, I'll see you at the next spot. This is, oh God, I thought I saw someone, oh my God. All right, I'll, I'll see you at the next spot. <laughs> Before you take your loved one out to one of the most romantic restaurants in the city, one if by land, two if by sea, make sure you look into its spooky past because this spot is haunted by Aaron Burr and his long lost daughter, Theodosia. Apparently, champagne glasses have been broken and hung paintings have fallen off the walls here. Theodosia has also said to have been seen on the staircase and apparently has been swiping the earrings off of unsuspecting diners. So if you lose your earring while dining here, you know who took it. You gotta go to Theodosia, okay? <laughs> Don't take it up with the wait staff. There's also a lady in black who may have died from a broken neck resulting from falling down the stairs. So next time you want to have a romantic dinner, make sure that you check into the ghost story. Washington Square Park might look like a beautiful park from the outside, but the true story is that there's nearly 20 thousand people buried underneath the ground here and that's because of an outbreak of cholera and yellow fever in the 1800s there's been so much paranormal activity here that many ghost tours start in this location and another uh, spooky spot is the hanging tree which is in the northwest corner uh, and that's where they used to hang people. So, a lot going on here, so be careful because you might see some ghosts if you're here later in the day.
thanks for watching. I hope to see you on my special ghost tour this October. And if you like this video, then watch my other videos. I have tons of them on things to do, eat, see, and much, much more. Follow me on Instagram at Sarah Funky, and I will see you next time.